Hello, my name is Adam and welcome back to my channel where I make a tabletop role-playing game from scratch on camera and this is the big summary episode where we revisit the lower dungeons, the crystal workshop and the broken lighthouse. Before we start today's episode, I just want to remind you of the 96 likes. Before I started this project with Explorers RPG, I've been using this book to just note down different stuff that is role-playing related. And I think this will be fun and interesting for world builders, role players and, well, anyone. So 96 likes and I will make a video where I go through the 96 pages that I have here. And while you're down there, please press the subscribe button, but let's go on to the video. So let's start by summarizing everything we got so far. We have the lower dungeons, which houses the executioner, a mini boss you can't kill. The dungeon also utilizes the Barsuk and the portal technology to hold prisoners here in holding cells which are in the Barsuk. Speaking of portal technology, we have the Crystal Workshop. It's a workshop that makes arch keys and other portal contraptions out of these crystals. The Crystal Workshop doesn't look like this, however, but is a pile of rubble the players can build up to make it look like this and they can make portal stuff on their own. Lastly, we have the Broken Lighthouse. A lighthouse that is trapped in the bar suck and the players will have to traverse through the chaotic lighthouse to get to the top, where they will be able to return it back to the overworld. Now let's try to fit all this together. And just to be clear, there was no plan from the beginning to link these three locations. It was just when I made them I figured, why not link them together to make things more interesting. The way I want to do this is by using the three clue rule. I alluded to this in episode 27 when talking about arch keys but I'll expand upon it now. The three clue rule is a rule that was first presented by the Alexandrian. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out yourself. The point of the three clue rule is that in order to tell the players where to go next, you need to present them with three clues to get them there. And these three clues shouldn't be just fractions of information and when combined they give the direction. No, each clue will individually tell you where to go. This is because this isn't a book or a movie. Clues in an RPG can be misinterpreted or just missed. So it's important for the players to get the correct information at least once. As the Alexandrian put it, the PCs will probably miss the first ignore the second and misinterpret the third before making some incredible leap of logic that gets them where you wanted them to go all along. So let's think about the conclusion we want to reach and come up with three clues for each of these. Conclusion number one, how to defeat the executioner. Conclusion number two, why they need to restore the crystal workshop and conclusion number three how to restore the broken lighthouse for the executioner as i've said previously the executioner is impossible to kill he or she is a relentless killing machine that aims for the head of anyone coming within reach and they wield the massive executioner sword that is a powerful magic weapon. Which I have to admit, I don't know what it does yet. Anyways, how do you defeat an unkillable ghost? I got to give credit yet again to Beard Clipper. He had the brilliant idea of how to defeat him slash her. 
you separate the sword from the ghost by luring the executioner into the barsak and closing the portal with the executioner in the barsak and the sword in the overworld the executioner will be defeated a genius idea yet again so check out his channel link in the description now we need to tell the players in three different ways that they have to lure the executioner into the barsak without the sword the first thing i thought of was the diary that i mentioned here a diary written by the then living executioner which describes the executioner's sadistic passion for beheading people before the executioner became a ghost and in the diary there should be a passage saying i love my sword more than anything in the world i think that if i ever was separated from it i would literally die this diary i'm actually placing in the crystal workshop because yeah just wait and see it's a weird place to put it but it will make sense in the end for the second clue we could have an academic book written by a scholar that describes the existence of ghosts say something like zombies and ghosts are two different creatures zombies are formed from people that die in the overworld and are corrupted by evil energies ghosts are formed from people that die in the barsak and are corrupted by evil energies zombies are weak to fire and will burn and die if you light them up ghosts are different they become ghosts because their spirit is trapped in an object an object of personal value and which is worn or held by the ghost separate the ghost from the object and they will die but be wary if they notice you're trying they will scream in terrifying agony again telling this will give the players direct information on how to defeat the executioner this book will be found in the lighthouse the unknown explorer has found this book in a library and knows how to both defeat zombies and ghosts. I'll probably add a note on the map found in the lighthouse with run from this ghost with a large arrow pointing to the lower dungeons. For the third clue, well, let's hold off the third clue until the end of the episode. So, currently, two clues to defeat the Executioner, a diary, and an academic book. Over to the Crystal Workshop. We'll need another three clues to explain to the players that they need to restore the workshop to get a hold of more advanced portal technology. And again, I'll leave the third clue till the end of the episode. The first clue I'm adding is a broken arch key. A broken arch key with the note, get this fixed at the workshop, it's urgent. Now this is not only a clue, but it's also a plot hook. Where does this arch key lead to? I don't have the answer yet, but that's something for another episode. I'll place this clue in the lower dungeons. A broken key that one of the guards left behind. For the second clue, I want to use the map found in the Broken Lighthouse. Not the secret part of the map, but the map part. Notes and arrows on the map that says, Go here to repair arch keys, but only during the day. The only during the day part is maybe true, I don't know yet, but it's fun to keep the players on their toes. Well. That was quick. Was that too quick? Um, okay, well, moving on. Lastly, the broken lighthouse. Two more clues, where the first one is a schematic. A schematic on how to make an enormous portal and the device that triggers it. 
this schematic is going to be placed in the crystal workshop. And this schematic is part of some portal technology plan that someone was planning to make. And apparently our mysterious explorer took this idea and went ahead and made it. The second clue we'll put in the lower dungeons. It's going to be a backpack or a sack which is left behind by our mysterious explorer again. I'm thinking he wandered through the lower dungeons and was ambushed by the executioner and ran and dropped the bag in the process. The bag would be full of useful items like different arch keys, some tools and first aid kits. Lastly, it contains a small map that leads the way to the lighthouse, as well as maybe some sort of portal device that makes it easy to navigate the lighthouse. I'm placing it somewhere here, close to the torture room. Uh, I want the players to walk over to the bag and say, hey, someone left this bag here. I wonder why it... Roll a reflex save. A large sword comes swinging for your head as the executioner lunges towards you. Now that we have a total of six clues, you might start to see a pattern. Two clues in each location and each of them point to the other two locations. This is part of the node-based scenario designed by the Alexandrian again. Let me show you. We have three locations. LD, which is the lower dungeons. CW, the crystal workshop. And BL, the broken lighthouse. And we have a start location that has three clues. One to each location. I haven't decided exactly what the start location is, but let's just assume that it's the Wandering Trader for now. Now, this start location has three clues, which means that the players will at least be able to get one of them. And as I said, the three clue rule means that you need at least three clues for the players to reach a conclusion. It just happens that in this case, the conclusion either leads them to the dungeons, the workshop or the lighthouse. Now let's say they conclude to go to the lower dungeons first. Here, when they investigate and hopefully defeat the executioner, they encounter two new clues, a dropped bag and an arch key needed to be repaired, either leading to the lighthouse or the workshop. And now the players have four clues, two to each location. One clue from the start location and the broken arch key will lead to the crystal workshop and the other from the start location and the backpack will lead to the broken lighthouse. Again, the three clue rule is held since they have at least three clues to reach a conclusion. And let's assume that the conclusion is to go to the workshop and try to restore it. Here they encounter two new clues, the diary of the human executioner and a schematic to create a large portal. The diary is useless since they've already dealt with the executioner and the two clues leading to the crystal workshop are spent, which leaves us with three clues. The clue from the starting location, the backpack and the schematic, all leading to how to unbreak the lighthouse. And this is how to make a node-based three clue rule setup. It's described much more in detail by the Alexandrian and how to expand it to something even bigger and create a whole mystery adventure around this type of design. As I said, I'll leave a link in the description so you can read it yourself. And we're done folks, we successfully added clues in both the dungeons, the workshop and the lighthouse so that the players are led to each one of them and can solve whatever is needed there. We'll probably revisit these places again further down the line, but that's all for this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. See ya!